Dr. Oz. Good morning, my friends. Big article came out in the journal Obesity. If you can imagine someone calls a journal that, <laughs> looking at some ideas that are pretty, pretty powerful and help you melt away belly fat. And one of them, as you mentioned, I'm going to discuss in today's show. It's called Forskolin. Uh, don't mispronounce that, by the way. It's, uh, it's, it's a product that is related to the mint family. It's a root, and it helps people uh, burn away fat but not muscle, which is important because a lot of times you go on a diet, you lose muscle as well as fat, and that's a problem because when you start to put weight on again for whatever reason, you'll yo-yo back up without the muscle to burn off extra calories. And this product also seems to help people build up a little more testosterone in their body and build up bone strength. So I'm excited about it. And again, it's been used for medicinal reasons before. It's a, it's, a, it's a route that could be valuable for a lot of viewers. Okay, and this works with or without exercise. This just can help you burn belly fat. Any program that you use to lose weight will work better with exercise, but the, the study that was done uh, in the journal just came out did not use exercise at all. It just added this as a supplement uh, daily over the course of 12 weeks. And again, the point is to make sure that it's safe, that no one was hurt, that seems to be the case, and that it's effective. In this case, they were effective at burning off selectively fat, but not muscle. So is this just belly fat? Because, you know, we hear all the time that you can't target weight loss, really. You, you, there's not much you can do. If you just want your belly or your backside or something like that, the more exercise you do there, it builds up the muscle, and then you just look bigger in that area. So does this just target specifically belly fat? Well, Dan, you, you can't target fat with exercise, but there are some forms of fat that are better treated with some approaches than others. For example, belly fat is usually related to high stress levels or uh, at, least, at least cortisol levels are high. And so the kinds of, of dietary habits that lead to that are specifically ones with lots of carbohydrates. And, and this product, is, uh, this compound seems to work by changing the decision that a fat cell makes when it's given nutrients. Can it deposit it as fat and store it, or should it burn it off as energy? And it seems to move it towards burning it off as energy, which is why it works. Fat in other parts of the body, for example, fat in the bottom side, if you're pear-shaped, is better dealt with by eating foods that are low in fat. So you, it's true you cannot target fat specifically with exercise, but you can with the foods you eat. Okay, and is that where the antioxidants come into play? Is that... Yeah, the antioxidants are hugely important in people who are, who are apple-shaped because that belly fat is often related to inflammation in the body. And the inflammation, that, that burning fire in your gut, actually leads to the fat being deposited there. Historically, there was a big value to us storing fat in our belly because if we're living in times of famine when there wasn't enough food, you wanted to selectively eat everything you could find and then store it in your belly where you could rapidly use it again. Whereas fat that's in the hips and thighs, especially in women, was valuable for childbearing because you could access that fat for longer periods of time. So there are reasons why we store fat the way we store it. It's related in part to our genes and where our families came from historically, but also to without question, it's affected by the foods that we eat.